Here we are at Box Hill Institute in our training CSOC, our Cyber Security Operations Centre. We teach both Certificate 4 and Advanced Diploma in Cyber Security, and as well as the Associate Degree Program as well. We have real equipment here that you can use. We've got real firewalls, real servers, a red team on the outside doing all the attacking, you've got a blue team on the inside doing the defending, and you've got a purple team monitoring, monitoring both teams, understanding what's going on seeing what types of attack and seeing how the blue team reacting and responding to these types of attacks. This space is incorporated into our programs very heavily so that students get an exposure, get an experience of what it's like to be a red team, what it's like to be that threat actor out there on the internet in their mother's basement attacking websites all across the world. We also give that experience of what it's like to be in the blue team, sitting in your sock, looking at the screens, checking the logs, seeing the attacks come in trying to mitigate, trying to understand how the attack is attacking a network and what we can do and what we can do to defend ourselves from these attacks. We are as vendor agnostic as we can be. We've got a mixture of Cisco, Palo Alto, Fortinet, Checkpoint, Splunk, all these different brands that are currently in use very heavily in the industry and you'll get exposure to all of these technologies. Here when you're working in the Cybersecurity Operations Center, you'll be using a multiple amount of tools. We'll be using Kali Linux. You'll be exposed to Windows operating systems, Ubuntu, and other sorts of tools you're going to use to both attack and defend your network from cybersecurity threats. You'll be exposed to some analytic tools, and one of the industry leaders at the moment for log analytics and threat analysis is Splunk. You'll be using the Splunk to analyze and understand the threats as they're coming in and generate reports. Reports that you can use as a threat analyst, but also nice reports that your manager will be interested in looking at. To make it as real world as possible, we have a ticketing system. So once you identify a threat, you can create a ticket, and that ticket is logged in the system using Sidearm. In that ticketing system, all the details are logged, so you can escalate that to a team member or get other people on board to assist you with that ticket. We even have telephones in the CSOC so we can make it as real world as possible. People can ring up and log complaints and you can try and track down the evidence of what they're ringing about in the analytics software. We use a blend of the physical and the virtual here in our training cybersecurity operations center. We've got real physical firewalls that you'll be checking the logs on, seeing the attacks come in and configuring them. And we also have a virtual firewall set up with virtual servers. So you can look at the DNS traffic, the web traffic, the YouTube traffic, and all of these traffic types. So you get to learn what's the good traffic and what's the bad traffic based on your analytic tools. So if you're in this space and you're in the red team, you're gonna have different tools at your disposal. We use both Kali Linux and the Metasploit tools. All of the tools that come packaged up in that software to attack and leverage vulnerabilities that you're gonna find in the real network. Our training CSOC is divided into three main areas. We have the blue room, which is the defend team. And here we have all of our people analyzing and trying to figure out what is going on, how the attack is progressing, and what they can do to mitigate it. Here we have the red room. This is the attack room. This is where you'll spend time using tools to search for vulnerabilities and try and attack resources and leverage those vulnerabilities. Here, we're in the purple room, the monitor room. We've got this large monitor behind me to see everything that's going on. Because our role in the monitor room is sort of a mentoring role. Because we're looking at both the red attacking team, how they're going at their attacks, and the blue defending team, and trying to look at how they're going defending it. So we're looking at the whole picture to see exactly what's going on from both sides of the attack defend role. We also have a tool in place that is generating traffic. It's called Breaking Point. This traffic generator is capable of generating megs and megs and megs of good, healthy traffic. So therefore the red team get the opportunity to try and slip their attacks in the gaps to hide it amongst all that good traffic. This tool can also generate lots and lots of bad traffic. So in the blue team, you're overwhelmed and you get the opportunity to try and figure out the best way, the best way to defend yourself from this overwhelming traffic. Here in Box Hill Institute's Training Cybersecurity Operations Centre, security is of course very important. So this space, these three rooms, are completely isolated from the public internet and the rest of Box Hill Institute's network. 
so that when you're doing your red team, when you're doing your blue team, there's no fear of your attacks leaking out onto the internet or the rest of our corporate network because this space is completely air-gapped from the rest of the network. I started here in, what, 2014, doing the Cert 4 in IT. And from that, as an international student, I moved in to going from that Cert 4 into the Advanced Diploma, uh, where I put up, uh, learned other skills about networking, virtualization, and other general IT. That then moved into when I started teaching for Box Hill, mainly in from Cisco's networking perspective, going through the curriculum of CCNA 1234, uh, teaching students about networking and, uh, and their principles, and then later moving into security areas. That then led me into carrying on studying in the uh, Bachelors of Computer Systems, majoring in software defined networks and networking here at Box Hill. Being around Box Hill for this amount of time and also teaching here and seeing some of the students, I was given the opportunity to move that my, my, um, my, my skill set from networking and channel it into more of cyber security. And that's what's happened, it's more of the uh, emerging trends that you're finding out from industry is that um, there are run or there are gaps within the marketplace where entry-level graduates are required in cybersecurity to fill those particular voids. That's mainly in cybersecurity analysts at being able to pick up individual tickets, uh, analyze what's going on on that particular network or system, and to try and find a particular response that could fix the issue for that client. What we're trying to do here and what we are doing within Box Hill and, and the, the Cert 4 in cybersecurity is exactly that. It's a year-long course at full time uh, that trains those students from having maybe an introduction to IT. They already know about how to use a computer, what a server is, um, and how, what a router is and a switch, and actually taking that information and expanding upon it from networking to programming to virtualization to a little bit of work health and safety, analyzing and presenting information, and then moving that again into channeling it into more incident response and what are the frameworks from SANS and from NIST, uh, and then relating that into a large project where you theoretically will build on paper a security operations center. After that year, the pathway then moves on into the advanced diploma of cybersecurity, which again lasts for one year, but you do pick up more units and it is a little bit more intense. The labs in those particular units in the advanced diploma get more advanced, as it says. Um, you're doing a lot more in the particular operations center here at Box Hill. You're doing a lot more at home with virtualization and analyzing and putting in and expanding upon those frameworks that you may have already been exposed to in the Cert 4. Most of our students here at Box Hill gain some type of employment, whether that's working in just an IT and company or doing a little bit in software or hopefully the majority of the, some of the partnerships that we offer here at Box Hill, actually those students were able to uh, obtain internships in security operation centers or in cyber security related roles. So that means when you're studying here for at Box Hill for the Cert 4 for that one year duration, you're here for two days a week and hopefully the other three days a week you're out at that uh, employer working with them learning on the job. Now that internship that the, our external partners may offer you can also be prolonged for an additional year if they wish to. So that means you can continue your studies in the advanced diploma while also continuing that relationship that you have with industry. So you can take what you learn in the classroom and you can go and display it out there in the real world environment and really get some hands on experience with what's actually happening out there. My name's David Brooks. I'm one of the senior trainers here at Box Hill Institute. Um, been here for about 10 years. My main role is looking after a lot of the infrastructure training. So. If you're working with servers, windows, um, and also a topic called virtualization, which you'll come across in pretty much all your subjects nowadays. When we use virtual machines to basically create a lot of the training environments that we use in, in class. And without that, we'd need literally hundreds of computers to, to, to build the lab environments that we use today. So I, I teach how to set that up, both on your home PC, which you can actually do work at home with. Or, um, we also have our own lab environment here with our own data center, both in the CSOC itself and also on another product we use called NetLab. And I also teach you how to build your own um, environment to use. And then when we move into the advanced diploma subjects, I also teach you how to secure it. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that, you know, be, just because it's virtual, um, it's still running a real operating system and it will be a target for hackers. So we basically need to work at how to defend it. And there's an entire industry now based around that. If you've ever heard of the term cloud computing, which most of you would have by now, um, it basically runs on virtual machines. Um, it's somebody's server in a data center somewhere running literally thousands of virtual machines. And so we will cover a lot of that content within the advanced diploma course. 
um, and also touch on it a bit more lightly in the Cert 4. Um, we'll actually start with that in the introduction and then we'll work up to more advanced topics as we progress you know, through your training. With the virtualization um, related content, um, we usually start off with an introductory type um, content, which you will basically do in your certificate for um, cybersecurity. And then later on, as you progress through the course and move into the more advanced level topics, uh, we do that in the advanced diploma. And you will basically learn how to build the network, set up an entire infrastructure you know, using virtualization tools. And then later on, we basically do another, another subject on defending it. So de designing um, virtualization security infrastructure. One of the things that we get asked a lot by people um, inquiring about the course is, you know, well, what work is there for me when I finish? Uh, if you're doing the Certificate 4, it was designed um, in conjunction you know, with major industry. So we're talking the Telstra's of this world, your four big banks, National Australia Bank, for example, ANZ, um, government agencies, they all were involved in the development of this course. So they basically told us what the candidate should have when they finished the course so that they could be job ready. Um, in the last two years, we've had people placed at National Australia Bank, at Australian Super, at Telstra, at various other companies that have come to us looking for graduates to basically place in their um, security um, operation centres. Um, typically what is described as a level one analyst. The level one analyst role could be something as simple as monitoring the daily traffic on your network. Typically when you go in as an entry level candidate, you will be looking at things like responding to incidents when they first occur. So you'll be manning the phones when someone rings up and says, hey, I think my computer has a virus, what do I do next? And then you will take that information and record it and then escalate it depending on you know, how dangerous the, the particular infection may be. So one of the areas that we also teach you is the compliant risk and audit areas. And one of the things that you may end up doing in a, in a job role is actually assessing the security posture of a company to see just how well prepared they are in the event of a cybersecurity incident. Uh, many organisations don't actually have an incident response plan when they're actually breached or, or, or infected with a um, piece of malware or viruses within, their, within the organisation, and which means they're basically responding um, at a time of stress trying to then undo the mess that's been caused by whatever's infected their systems. One of the things we get asked about students is, you know, what opportunities do I get to test my skills out you know, when I, once I've learnt all of this? Um, Boxhill's part of a group called WorldSkills, and we just recently ran um, the WorldSkills for Cyber Challenge um, just last weekend. And that basically had our students pitted against students from um, other TAFEs in Victoria, plus Western Australia, South Australia, Northern Territory, Queensland and New South Wales. Um, we fared reasonably well in the competition. Um, we finished in the top 10, which was pretty good. And basically the winners of those competitions then move into the national competition. And then from there, we'll actually go to Russia in a couple of years time for the actual world championships. And that competition is a two-fold competition. There's a, basically a red team and a blue team member, the two men teams. And the red team, his job is to basically attack the vulnerable systems that are in the, the lab environment and try and gain as much information as they can, while at the same time the blue team member is monitoring the network and defending and trying to identify threats as they actually appear on the network. So that was quite a good activity. That was in partnership with a company called Ixia who actually make the traffic generator for our CSOC, which is called Breaking Point. So while this was happening, the Breaking Point software that we used was actually firing in regular traffic that you would see on any network, things like Facebook and YouTube and just normal web surfing. And while that was occurring, they were also firing in things like um, malware and virus samples through the network to see, you know, is, is the blue team member awake and actually noticing that I'm actually trying to infect the network? And if they were, they scored points. If they missed it, they got nothing. One of the things we discovered from the competition was that even though the students are learning quite a lot about penetration testing, they have, at this point in time, they probably hadn't had enough time to practice. So one of the things we're working on 
within our lab environment is actually giving them some additional tutorials and also just hands-on practice that they can do before the competition starts so that when they go in, they're a bit more confident. Because one of the things we, got, we discovered, it runs for six hours and we noticed that early on especially, the students, they weren't floundering but they were struggling to initially work out what the tactics would be to actually go in and get the information that they needed. So, so us as teachers, we were there as mentors as well, just to give them a bit of a prod and a bit of guidance as well. Hi, I'm Jo Cave. I'm the Head of Cyber and IT at Box Hill Institute. In 2019, we've seen significant increase in the amount of students that have been using the CSOC. It has been an exciting year, seeing this growth in the students using it and watching the students learn from this real life experience in the classroom. Feedback we've had from students that have gone into internships or have gained employment in the cyber industry have said the time that they've had in the, in the CSOC has been so beneficial with relating to what they do in the workplace. Another benefit of the CSOC, it is run as a facility for organisations to come in and offer training to staff as well as understand a little bit more about the industry, we also do capture the flags. We have policies and procedures that uh, we've established with running the CSOC, so that also gives the students an extra dimension in understanding the governance. We all think of cyber as being IT focused, which primarily it is, but there is also the governance, which is policies, procedures, um, also looks at the risk aspect of it. A lot of organisations these days, you cannot apply for a tender or have policies and procedures without cyber risk incorporated into it. In the past, traditionally, industries referred to you have risk and you have cyber risk, whereas in the last couple of years, it's just risk. There's no such thing as an isolated cyber risk. We've seen a rise in the amount of chief risk officers that organisations have, whereas traditionally that used to be you know, a finance function, whereas now they report directly into the CEO or they report to the board, and that a lot of their function is around cyber security. I'm Umesh Patel, um, I'm a lecturer uh, and a part of uh, a degree teaching team at Box Hill Institute. What we offer to our student is uh, three years bachelor's course uh, with major in cyber security currently. We also have majors in cloud and virtualization. This course is available for both uh, local and international students. Uh, the course we specialized in uh, have vendor qualification embedded such as Cisco, Microsoft, Linux, uh, VMware and so on. We uh, directly address industry requirements, a uh, skill shortage uh, in the industry and our graduates are working successfully in companies like Telstra, NZ, uh, Dimension Data, uh, National Australia Bank uh, and even Cisco. Uh, our graduates uh, since last 15 years, uh, they basically give us uh, uh, course satisfaction uh, rate almost 100%. We also have 100% employment rate in terms of local students so far. The good features of our course is we, we offer a practical based course, uh, lab facilities and practical uh, abilities uh, available to our students 24-7. This course is also accredited by Australian Computer Society at professional level. Three years course also have exit point uh, to associate degree after two years and also higher education diploma after one year. Uh, so anyone uh, who is interested in one year course or two years course or three years course, they are uh, happy to start and that way as entry point or it is available as exit point as well. Our students like our course uh, in terms of uh, uh, the teaching uh, staff that we have. And the way we teach based on our practical based learning, uh, the course curriculum, vendor embedded uh, courses, uh, students like those very much and our graduates working in the industry, they provided a feedback that this course is basically addresses skill requirement directly, uh, directly uh, that industry awards.